That was in the afternoon. After that, he went into his room for the rest of the day. Aloha, I'm Van Kedis, and welcome back to more Turn About of Courage. And you have no clue what he did during that time? I'd have had to peek in his room in order to know. Um, fine then. Indeed, you would have to have looked secretly to take a look into looking in the room. <laughs> that was bad. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good, that you understand. Can we get on with it then? In your dreams! Not so fast, Miss Maria. Stop avoiding the actual question. I asked whether you knew something about what they did during that time. So far, the only thing you answered was what you'd have to, have to done in order to know. Is that so? So stop avoiding the actual question. You took a little peek inside, didn't you? Hey, what maid would do such a thing like that? You could be fired for it. And it severely damaged one's reputation, so it would be difficult to get employed again. <laughs> stop avoiding the question and answer. Did you take a peek or not? Fine. Maybe I was a little curious. So what? Alright. And did you see anything interesting? Oof. <laughs> sure did. Ooh. It looked like he wanted to leave the house for a while. Why did it seem like that? A suitcase was opened on his bed and it looked like he was packing in some clothes. As interesting as this is, I wonder if this shit would be related to relevant here. Do you really think this was important? Important as always. This is really important, your honor. Okay, if you say so, can't hurt to have it added. I hate you. Now I'll be fired once Mr. Edgeworth gets to know of this. Good. <laughs> That's what you get for being so sneaky. So, from here on, I'm gonna have to thank a user called Quando1313 for helping me get past this chart. This testimony, because this testimony is really tricky. You're gonna have to press the statement. I peeked into Mr. Edgeworth's room once and I saw him packing a suitcase. You have to press this once. Well, to my knowledge. <laughs> Did he, before that point, ever give any hints as to where he, or why he'd want to go? Nope. Hmm. Do you remember anything about what, what exactly he put into this case? As I said, I think I saw some clothes being packed into it. Actually, that was just my impression from how he moved while packing though. And no, nothing else in particular I noticed besides that. And all of this happened around what time? Hmm, around 9 or 10 p.m. Or maybe 10 minutes earlier because the clock I used to check went wrong, right? Well, anyway, I didn't want to risk more than that, so I returned to my duties after that peak. Just where did Edgeworth run off to? Now this part's gonna be fun. You have to go to... Where is it? Hold on, I'm recording! Or oh, is that my cat? <laughs> Well, I noticed him and asked him where he was heading to such a late hour. You're gonna have to press this statement. I have a question. To be honest, I'm not sure what could be asked, what to ask here. Could be dangerous. You're gonna have to ask this question and this question, just in case. So, anything strange happened about him? Aside from the fact that he left at such a late hour? Yeah, something else seemed to have strange, really strange. What was it? Can't put qu can't. <laughs> Something was wrong. Something about his behavior. The guy was scheming something. What the? Why would Miles... No clue what all of this means, but I think it's pretty certain that he was involved somehow. Now let's go ahead and press the second statement. So hold it. I have a question. How did he react? How did Mr. Edgeworth react? Oh, he seemed pretty shocked. He didn't look like he didn't want to be seen. Wait. So... In the previous statement, he was packing for clothes, and then in this one, he didn't want to be seen. So, he quickly answered the question and ran for it. Well, that's str that. Str certainly strange, but I'm not sure what to make of it. I can't even read today. <laughs> Alright, this is where the fun begins. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I just want to check something. I could have sworn I saw... I saw... Yep, that's a misspelling. Black Rune. <laughs> Egg D worth. I'm gonna call him that, Egg Deworth. Alright, Mr. Um, I peeked into Mr. Egg Deworth's room once and saw him packing his suitcase. Did he, before that point, ever give any hints as to where or why he'd want to go? Nope. Hmm. Do you remember anything about the why exactly he put it into the case? What he put in there? As I said, I think I saw some clothes being packed into it. Actually, that was just. Oh, I just read this. So let's see. And that. We're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to. Yeah, press this one too. All right. Did you notice anything? Nothing that I haven't told you already. Something suspicious. Let's accept it for now. Do that. You may go on. Now this is the part we press this statement as long as we can about the suitcase because we've done what we can. So we're gonna press what is next and see if we get something. 
Yes, and we got it. Wait a second. Now I know what you, for some strange reason, didn't bother mentioning. Thank you, Kwando! <laughs> oh, and what would that be? Quite a simple, this, quite simple, the suitcase. You said you saw him packing one, right? Correct? But you claim that when he left the house, he carried nothing of the sort. <gasps> Ooh. Yet it would make more sense if he took the suitcase with him. Wouldn't you agree? Huh, true. So? Stop mixing things up. Did he take it with him or not? Learn to listen. Remember what she actually said. Nothing that I haven't told you already. First obvious question. Did she tell you before the trial about Edgeworth taking the suitcase with him? Actually, yeah. I seem to recall that she did mention something about the suitcase. So there. She simply assumed you knew nothing about it already. Nothing strange. Indeed. So it's nothing like a light on the stand or something. Just a sneaky wording trick. And you actually thought you were onto something there, huh? Hold it. Who's that? Whoa, what's happening now? Wait a, s wait a second. Mr. Eggbeworth carried the suitcase? Now that I think about it. <gasps> Larry, Larry was holding it? Wasn't that actually Mr. Butthead? <gasps> ooh, 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 ooh. There, say that again, witness. Uh, yeah, I think it was actually Mr. Butthead who carried the suitcase when he left. It's just strange that I saw it in Mr. Edgeworth's room where there. What could that mean? Ooh, this changes a lot. I'm not sure what just happened. Now it's suddenly Larry who had the suitcase. How the hell do you mix that one up? They don't even look look alike. Well, from the back. Nah. <laughs> but how was I supposed to know what would be that big question about it the next day? Or do you remember things like how, how many suitcases you saw yesterday? Well, um, there's no way something like that would actually be ever important. But if you really want to, no, then we're 42. <laughs> the answer to life. Good job, Kazama. Whatever the case, if this means that Larry carried a suitcase Mr. Edgeworth prepared, there you have a connection. He took something else to the crime scene. But we didn't see the suitcase. You saw the victim arriving there, right? And you didn't notice the suitcase. Err girl, this servant girl is mistaken. No suitcases for a victim. No, the murderer could have taken it. It's true that we did see the victim arrive, however. It was dark, and we only managed to spot him due to the candle he was holding. It follows that we could have easily failed to notice a something like a suitcase. Ooh, okay, fine. You wanna play like this? My next problem should be obvious. Nothing like a suitcase was found at this crime scene. Can you care to explain? Someone could have taken it afterwards. That's my theory. Well, no, hold your horses. You can't play it like that. Look, isn't it obvious? Isn't it the obvious way to argue that there was some sort of trap in the suitcase? I mean, if you really want to overturn the fact, you have to find a way around the key issue somehow. And well, the only way to do that is to claim that the victim used his key to lock the door to his grave. Well, the, uh, the key was with the defendant the whole time, so, huh. Okay, so now let's think about it. In order for this to work, you'd have to take that thing with him. But whoops, nothing like that was ever found in the room. And no, this is not the same as the suitcase. Don't even go there. <laughs> you know what? How about this then? Shortly before midnight, the victim arrived with the suitcase. Then, someone arrived and took the suitcase. That's what I was thinking. Stop objecting! Oh. Uh. Why exactly would the victim let them in during this strange testing thingy? I don't know, but what if that person took the suitcase, planted some sort of trap and left? After that, the victim did have his encounter with the defendant and that didn't kill him. Larry recovered a bit later, locked the room again and fell victim to that trap. Whoa, what if theory? Oh wow, seriously? Where do I begin here? What kind of trap that wouldn't be found afterwards would make him fall out of the window? And it doesn't explain why the candle wasn't burning when the defendant knocked the victim out. Oh crap, mm. Why? just why can't I explain this? It's because of Hazama. There's nothing I can do against that solid logic. Well this was shaky to begin with. A mysterious person taking a suitcase with clothes. Face it, this whole damn thing just fall failed badly. Unless he was... <gasps> Unless someone was dressed as Larry? Wait, or just saying that suitcase issue doesn't really change a thing. It never showed up at the crime scene, so the victim didn't take it there. End of story. Strange? Yes. Connected to the case at hand? Not at all. I'm afraid I have to agree with the prosecution here. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> there is no connection between Mr. Eggedeworth's action that evening and the incident. This is beyond bad, but... Raise the exception. What? What? I just raised the exception. A, a, exception. The cross of examination of Miss Maria is over. The court will now proceed to objection. Not so fast, Your Honor. There is a connection between Mr. Edgeworth and the murder. There is, but didn't we just find nothing suggesting that? 
We just established that the suitcase wasn't couldn't have been that important. So good luck showing a proper connection without that. Oh, and keys, anyone? Yeah, I, <laughs> I saw knew he was gonna say that. Oh, blah 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 blah. Hmm. The prosecution has a point, even if there was another connection. Your Honor, we have to examine all relevant leads before we conclude that. On one chance. <gasps> Holy crap, no. Thanks, Your Honor. <laughs> Thanks, Your Honor. So I'm better not letting this go to waste. I suppose it's time to reveal some chunk cards. Yes, there's still one way to connect Edgeworth with what happens there. Um, alright. <laughs> let's save. And let's do this. The possible connection between Mr. Edgeworth and the incident at the church is... Is it the challenge? I mean, it was the reason it can't be the autopsy port because then, yeah, the clock because no, the love letters because Luna, business report because that's not relevant yet, Bible because it's Peter. I think it's the challenge because at the fourth part it says, um, Luna? And Luna and Edgeworth, so maybe the challenge... Well, I saved, so let's go ahead and present the... <gasps> Did it work? Yes! The challenge? The challenge? The challenge? The cha <laughs> What? Why are you saying that too? I mean... Yeah, the challenge! This is the challenge that prompted Larry to go at to the church at the time in the first place. Objection! <laughs> Edgeworth isn't mentioned in here, but Luna is. Of course he isn't. The real issue lies somewhere else. Okay then, try them time to raise the stakes. I want the exact page and evidence explaining your claim. Relax, this isn't as difficult as it looks. The page you need to look at is page 4. Because it has Luna. So, page 4. It's the fourth page, naturally. Mm-hmm, yeah, sure thing. So what it actually explains the connection to Edgeworth there? Luna! With her staring gaze. What the hell was that? Your face. Her face. This is Mrs. Mrs. Luna Atley, the current owner of Cool Company. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, psh, I forgot, because Edgeworth mentioned Cool Company. As you might have noticed, the sender of this challenge referred to herself as Luna. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I like to state the obvious. And now you're just concluding it's a random Luna you picked, hmm? Yes, it's the pony. It's not that random. Please recall what Miss Maria told us earlier. He mumbled something about a cool company and rushed outside. Do you see? Mr. Edgeworth obviously meant cool company. And the person who wrote the challenge herself, just like the owner of the play, caught herself... Yeah. <laughs> it's unlikely that this is just a coincidence. Ooh. Because the owner of the company wrote the letter for Larry to go in there. So... What? This is the person who wanted Larry to go to the church at midnight. Mr. Edgeworth mentioned her company. And that pretty much proves it. Ooh. Is that far-fetched to imagine the sender of this letter had something to do with the murder? The possibility of a co coincidence exists. You're just saying he just happened to, to die during exactly the, the, the specified time in this letter? I cannot read today. Don't forget that the key the victim used was also included in it. What if the whole test was just a trap to get rid of him? Ooh. <gasps> no, that's just silly. And we have no why. Keys anyone? Confession? Aww. Oh. Come on. There are also other possible explanations for that. Are you saying it is wrong to ask the person who made him go there in the, in the first place to a few questions? Oh, so that's what you want, another witness. That's actually good. Why are you trying so hard to waste even more time than I did? Stop arguing. This is not going anywhere. So I suppose you want to question the sender of the letter. As reasonable as it sounds, I have my doubts we learn anything new. Sorry. The court will take a one-hour research. The prosecution will call a message at me. Well, I guess this is where Hazama objects. But let me warn you, any signs of this being a giant waste of time will be punished severely. Please don't elaborate, Mrs. At me. Please don't elaborate. Oh, oh no, she's gonna elaborate a lot. A lot. And looks like it's going to be the end of part two. Thank you, Hazama. You're actually clapping for me this time in a way that makes me smile. However, the real challenge is still ahead. Good luck. Oh boy. Oh. Did it just glitch? Okay, we're going to the next part of the trial. Part 3. Alright, 
I'm starting the next part in the next video. So here we're going to theorize what happened. Well, <laughs> I don't really have a theory. I'm just going to think. So Larry was given the challenge by Luna. So then he went to the place over there. The place over there which was... This is going to be such a sucky uh, theory. but um. So Larry went to the place. But it turns out Edgeworth knows that something... Edgeworth... <laughs> I don't really have a theory. Edgeworth was going where Larry was to dress up as Larry. So then the silhouette is not Larry, but it's Edgeworth. Is that weird? Theories, people have their own perspectives, but that's just me. And the clock, that would be the reason why he told Maria to set it up. And then this report has to deal with some kind of deal they had where, um, something. <laughs> So then, ooh, nice. So yeah, the love letters to Luna is the reason why he would have to go there. So then Edgeworth was in place of Larry. But then something happened for them for them both to switch again. And then something went wrong. This theory kind of sucks. <laughs> and this cage came out of nowhere that had a sort of animal. And then Peter Berg. <laughs> Peter Berg goes and whacks it and gets blood on the Bible. And there you have your theory. <laughs> See you guys in the next episode of Turnabout Our Courage Part 3, which is the last part of the trial. Laters!